In this video, I'm gonna be going over how I went about installing my Mustang S550 independent rear suspension in the back of my 72 F100. Uh, a couple of disclaimers as we get into the video. Uh, first off, this is all filmed after the fact. I had spent about a week straight of just measuring, cutting, measuring, cutting over and over again. And uh, by the time it really clicked and I figured out how I was doing this, I realized that had there been any information out there on the internet, this would have gone much quicker. And so I wanted to share some of my steps and the discoveries along the way. With that said, these numbers are not gonna be accurate. Like I said, I've already notched and cut into this. Um, I'm just kind of getting the last bits of it done. Um, so don't use any of the measurements that I'm talking about in this. Just use the techniques that uh, I use to come up with these measurements. Uh, secondly, uh, you're definitely going to want to have the wheels and tires that you plan on using um, to determine your ride height. It's going to be really important. It's also going to be important to center uh, your wheel inside the wheel well. Uh, without it being too goofy forward or backwards. Um, Alright, so with all that said, let's get to it. Okay, so this is how we initially mocked up the IRS on the frame. Before we did any cutting or anything, this we just took these planks and some all thread bolts, put them right through the uh, stock mounts and this gave us the wiggle room to move it around what we first did was uh lined it up with the original axle uh made a mark there and this tried to get these uh drive shafts in that zone tightened these down and then we were able to move the truck and frame around everywhere and the next thing we did was get a look at it uh, is we're gonna put the bed on here see where the ride height is it's gonna be sky high right now so we've set the bed on top and it's just sitting on those boards and this giant nuts that are on those all thread bolts. So it's kind of cockeyed, not flush to the frame, but I do have the bolt holes lined up. And so what we can do here now is kind of decide if our wheel's sitting in the wheel well where we want it. So at this point you want to make whatever judgment you want on where you want it to sit. Right now it looks like I want it to come back a little bit. I want it to sit nice and even inside that wheel well. So that's kind of how we made that adjustment, measured where we wanted to move that. So we're going to take the bed back off we're gonna actually make a different mount, something thinner, so that we can sit this bed flush and see where it's at. But we're gonna make those forward and back adjustments to the rear end to get that to sit right where we want it. So we gotta get rid of those boards in order to get that bed to sit on flush. So we switched over to this, it's like half inch or five eighths steel plate and just welded these all thread bolts to them that are gonna go right back down into those stock mounts and then bolt it on the bottom and then I just had a piece of scrap metal that worked on this side things from an airbag that we just kind of tack welded right now it's just held on with a c-clamp but tack welded that to the frame and was able to get that all thread bolt through here which held the front on that way the bed sat right on the frame where it's supposed to and you get all the bed holes in there they'll figure out how to get the actual ride height that we want and how figure out how far we want to cut into the frame. All right. So at this point we have the IRS clamped to the frame. We have it lined up where we want in the wheel well, and we want to figure out where the ride height is. So what we need to do is we need to jack up the IRS to get this drive shaft or axle level because that's where you want your ride height to be so you have the best camber adjustment so you can align the tires and not wear those out so right now we're set pretty level I just put a magnetic level on the axle and when we look at it's sitting pretty good but I wanted a little lower I wanted this bed to tuck that wheel a little bit down here but if I just lower it with the coilovers, that's gonna put our drive shaft at the wrong angle, which is gonna put our tires cockeyed, and we don't wanna do that, so we wanna bring that cradle up, which is going to level out that axle. So, I'm gonna come over to the lift. I'm gonna raise that wheel up a little bit. 
and figure out where I want it. So if I like that, now if we look at the drive shafts, it's no longer level. It's kind of cockeyed. That wheel's gonna be towed in a little bit and we don't want that. So in order to fix that, but keep this ride height for, for the look, we're gonna bring the cradle of this up into the frame. So we need to measure the distance from level axle to ride height and we'll measure the bottom of this cradle to the ground and measure the difference from when we're at level axle and from when we're at our desired ride height. And that's gonna be the amount that we're gonna have to cut into the frame to achieve that. So right now we're at level axle and distance from the bottom of the cradle to the ground is about 19 and 5 eighths right now. And that's at level axle, which means this should be a little higher than what I want right now. So I'm gonna bring this back down to the desired ride height. I'm not quite there. So getting it to the desired ride height. And we're gonna go back down here and look at our axle, which is going to be kind of cockeyed, dipping down a little bit. So we wanna get that back up, but keep the frame where it's at. So we're gonna measure again. Now I'm at 19 and 1 8. That means I need to go about a half inch back up into the frame and that should level out that axle. And that's how I get the measurement for how far up to go. That measurement's not exactly right because I've already notched my frame and it's not actually sitting where it is. So, but that is probably the best method of figuring out where you need to go with yours. So this is the notch I ended up with for the ride height. It is two and a half inches into this frame. What I focused on mainly was this rear part to actually get the height that I wanted. There is a half circle over here to give clearance for the upper control arm and the axle because they will go up into this frame here. And then we preserved most of this front bit as long as possible during the cutting until we got down to the final two or three eighths of an inch in there. So we can, we can control the pinion angle here. And we really just shaved off a little bit in the front. Um, we were maintaining between zero and negative two on the pinion angle. From what I hear, it's pretty much right where we need to be for this. This thing's gonna be welded to this frame. It's gonna have almost no movement. The only thing that differential can move on is these rubber bushings in here. So we actually tested this by putting a jack stand underneath the differential and putting the whole weight of the truck on it. And even then it maybe lifted a half a degree at, at most, I think we got like 0.4. And so to eliminate any kind of chatter or vibration um, on your drive line, you need the rear differential and the yoke of the transmission to be zeroed out. So if you have a negative two or three degrees on the differential, then you're gonna want a positive two or three degrees on the transmission so that they zero out and that will eliminate any kind of issues that you have driving down the road with vibration and everything like that so another thing i wanted to mention was that when the suspension's fully compressed down these upper control arms this knuckle right here goes pretty high up and nearly touches bottom of the bed but what it actually hits is like this extra piece of sheet metal that's hanging down here so the best thing too is to set the bed on there lower it down mark that and what i did was I just cut up. There's this piece of sheet metal that hangs down here before it gets into the butt welds. So I just cut up to that so I didn't sacrifice the, the weld. And then I just kind of hammered it flat. And now I have maybe a quarter inch of gap between the knuckle of that upper control arm and that bed flange thing. And it doesn't hit. All right, so we're just about to tack this thing in for good. And I just wanted to make a couple notes that we have preserved these rear um, IRS mounts because this plate and bracket setup has really helped us uh, remove it and place it back in every time we can just cinch that thing in tight and uh, right back where it was every time. These forward mounts have been chopped off because um, they're going to be welded to this plate. We've put this uh, piece of uh, 3 16 reinforcement plate uh, welded to the frame on the outside to reinforce it. We've also 
made these gussets on the inside. They're welded to the inside of the frame and then they're gonna get welded to the IRS cradle. And those are on either side. The shocks mount right to the outside here. And since it's been notched on either side, one for the upper control arm clearance and one for the cradle weld, um, it made this really loose. And that's where the, sh the shocks are gonna mount and it was bending a lot. So these gussets here are gonna reinforce that. So here we have it. The IRS is all welded in there. It's been plated up, reinforced. Um, as you can see, I have chopped off that those last two mounts on the tail end. I was using that plate to hold it in there. Box that in. I got the pet frame all painted up, um, and it's ready to start putting it back together. I couldn't be happier with where this has gone so far. I highly recommend it. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, ask them in the comments. Go to f100performance.com for parts or questions, and uh, don't be afraid to get out there and start welding one in.